Hi, this is Greg McCoach, editor of The Mining Speculator. I'm here in Toronto, Canada, March 4th, 2023, at the Metals Investor Forum, and I'm with President and CEO Dave Cole from EMX Royalty. Great. Dave, thanks so much for having me again. Yeah, always My a pleasure. pleasure. Yeah, no, I, as I always say, you know, if new investors are looking to build a mining portfolio, start with start with the uh, royalties, you know? So they're phenomenal. They are. They're the best way to invest, in my view, no doubt, hands down. So with that, Dave, you know, we've we just did a recent interview uh, where we talked about how strong your royalty portfolio is and growing stronger every day. Um, let's get your take on what what metals you like and why. OK, that's an interesting topic and it's a hot topic You hear people discussing it now. And I'll tell you one a big picture observation. When I was a young geologist in my career, pretty much the only metal people cared about was gold from yeah. an exploration and discovery standpoint. Right. And now it's half the periodic table. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, <laughs> because the, the demand for metals and different metals just continues to augment throughout society right. and around the world. And, you know, that that we are not seeing the mining operations well enough capitalized to be able to right. meet that Demand. incipient demand yeah and it's going to be tremendous so there's going to be some gaps here that are shortages price increases it's all good for us in the mining space copper what, could do a palladium yeah really i mean you know a palladium <laughs> price exp <laughs> right. just exploded right because there just wasn't enough palladium to make auto catalysts right, right we're going to be in the same situation in the copper business in my opinion right and you know with four dollar copper my goodness it's still grossly low compared to where it has to be for all these uneconomic copper projects worldwide to go, to go into production. What I find astonishing is $4 copper is a very strong copper price relative to right. where it has been. Right. And the interesting thing is it's that during the so-called economic downturn. So what does copper look like, you know, when they really need it to build all of the electric vehicles and the infrastructure to be able right. to charge those vehicles and on and on, not, not to mention refrigerators and radiators, et cetera, right. et cetera. Right. No, it, it's super bullish. You, you yeah. know, copper is, it, out of all the metals, I mean, I like, I'm on record saying this, you know, gold and silver to some degree, but copper. Uh, those are my metals that I'm most bullish on. Well, there's a good reason to be bullish on precious metals, Greg. You know this better than anybody. The governments just keep printing more money. <laughs> so you, you, you've got to be bullish gold and silver. Absolutely. The other metal I like a lot is nickel. Nickel. Tell me, tell me about that. So nickel is one of the key components in batteries right. and the battery chemistry that they're talking about in the future, they shift here and there. One commonality of most of the models right. is they have copper and nickel in them. Uh -huh. And the world, if you think the world's short on copper, well, it's really nickel. short on yeah. it. Yeah. So it's it, a very interesting situation. And I, I don't even know of any nickel deposits that are known that could come into production quickly. Do you? I. So there's low-grade lateritic deposits throughout the tropics, which is where those types of deposits okay. occur. And there are some new technologies that's allowing the battery-grade nickel to be able to be processed from those low-grade deposits. So that's one potential source. But mm -hmm. in terms of the really good one, the nickel sulfide systems, you know, the best ones in Russia, that has a problem oh, right now. Right, right. And, and <clears throat> so it, it's a very interesting uh, situation in the nickel market. Right. That's an real over in Russia that Dave's mentioning. And that's almost exhausted, right? I mean, it seems to keep keep going, but it's 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 getting, an aged asset. A, aged asset. So, and that's one of the biggest, right, in the yes. world. So that's produced an awful lot of metal. What a... So it, it could be very interesting to see where the nickel comes from in the future. Yeah. And obviously where nickel prices are at now, I mean, if we have to ramp up nickel, I mean, the price would have to go up quite, quite dramatically. So I agree. Yeah. The car manufacturers are, are definitely concerned about their nickel supply. Yeah. 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 How, you know, do, what, what component, what percentage of it, you know, like if they're doing a multi battery metal type battery, what, what percentages of, of nickel copper, yeah, you know, I don't have, I don't have that committed to memory, but yeah. I know one thing. When you talk about lithium, everyone talks about lithium. Yeah, right? right. There's actually quite a bit of lithium in the world. Yeah, it's just a matter of supply inelasticity, getting those lithium deposits coming online to actually be produced in right. time for the demand. Right? right. But we know that there is lithium out there. Right. That's not the case with nickel. But there's an interesting uh, factoid with respect to lithium ion batteries, and the largest component of a lithium ion battery by weight is 
copper. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, this so, is what I'm saying. The, it, it's yeah. kind of uh, misleading, right? Yeah. We, people don't understand how many, how much of these other metals actually make up the battery. I mean, mm -hmm. We'll have to find that out now. I'm curious. I want to know for myself yeah. what percentage of copper is in a battery when they say it's a lithium battery. No, it's it's a copper lithium battery. It's actually it's a copper lithium battery. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And now we know nickel, too. It's going to mm -hmm. be part of that. So, no, that's that's just fascinating. I think that's a a good dialogue for us to share with other people because they need to be asking themselves those questions. Which metals do they want to invest in? Which ones do they like? And we've been around a long time, so you know we, we kind of see it. Um, how bullish do you think it's going to get? Usually these waves and these cycles are more exacerbated than we anticipate, yeah. both on the downside and on the upside. And there's a saying that the cure for low prices is low prices right, right, right. and the right. cure for high prices is high prices. Right, right. When we have this long period of low prices and there's a lack of capital that's coming into the sector, right. then that creates an exacerbated effect and the rubber band swings right. the other way. Yeah. And it's hard to know what it looks like. And the other variable in the equation is how the value of the currencies react in the context of all the money printing going on. Right because the value of the currency can go down at the same time as the real value of copper is going up. And so does that make copper eight or 18? Right, right, no, I, I agree. And yeah, it's just the, the worse the downside is, the longer it is, the better the upside, the longer the upside mm -hmm. is gonna be. It kind of equals, like you said, it's a pendulum, but well, that's good. I'm glad we covered that. Let's, with the last three minutes we have, let's just focus on um, your royalty company is so solid, it's growing by leaps and bounds, you keep making deals, you're so well diversified, and a lot of your royalties are in copper, mm. gold, right? We so, focused on those commodities. Right, yeah. and I just think that mm -hmm. being that we're so bullish, both of us, we agree, we're in agreement on that. Your royalties are really focused on that. How do you see that playing out with some of your biggest royalties at this moment? You know, we're really pleased to be exposed to long life copper assets, including the Timuk project in Serbia, multi, probably half a century mine life. I mean, it's it's a gigantuan deposit. We don't know the official mine life yet, but it's a huge deposit. Yeah. Two billion tons at 1% approximately. Wow. Uh, then the Castorones royalty that's paying nicely for us also has a multi-decade mine life. Uh, very pleased to be uh, uh, have a chunk of that. But EMX's portfolio goes much deeper than the paying royalties at the top of the pyramid. We have a very broad base of pyramid, which creates all that discovery optionality. Right. Um, and we talked about the Abra Silver discovery right. that's ongoing today. And you're part of that. Yeah. And we're, that's, that's just a fantastic example. And yeah. there's a m multitude of those around the world where we're part of other people spending money, advancing resources, and we have a piece of it. Yeah. Well, I always tell people you're, as far as stability, longevity, and rock solid foundation with great upside, you're as good as it gets, buddy. Well, I really appreciate it. It's, that's a great compliment it's, coming from you. Great. It's, Thank uh, you. You know, it's the reason why I think one of the panelists or one of the questions you got was, why is uh, Franco Nevada a shareholder? Yeah. They don't have any other junior mining in their that's portfolio. A, that's, a, I mean, that, that's a pretty good endorsement. They're the smartest guys in the mining business. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, hey, Dave, always a pleasure.